Hi guys, gals, and NBs. Today, I will show you how to make this disintegrating cloth audio reactive. We will start by making a little audio analysis component that we can use for many different projects. I have to admit that I really struggled with this tutorial. And that's for two reasons. Reason number one, I feel like it only appeals to my personal aesthetics. I like very slow moving objects, and maybe you want to make visuals for a rave or something like that. But I hope that you find the principles useful anyways. The second reason is this. Making something that is audio reactive requires a lot of fine tuning. It is a process of tinkering and making very small adjustments that is specific to your music and your sensibilities. So I can't make a tutorial where I say, if you do it like this you get this response, etc. But I will walk you through my process, and maybe that is helpful. I am borrowing a lot of ideas from other people here, specifically, I want to shout out Matthew Reagan and Electronaut, who I am borrowing ideas for this audio analysis component from. Check out their channels for a deeper understanding. But let's get started. Let's start with a blank project. Let's drop down an audio file. And connect that to an audio device out. A keyboard in to restart it. Connect that to a null. Chuck down a math and combine channels by maximum. Let's put down an analyze chop. And use our MS power. Chuck down a filter chop. And we already have a network that measures volume. Let's rename this channel to Total. But we want to split this into a base, a mid, and a high. So let's copy and paste this three times. Create a merge chop and combine these. And let's rename all of these to low, mid, and high. Let's drop down an audio filter on our high channel. Use a high-pass filter and set it to frequency. If you want to monitor this with your ears, to hear what frequencies we are isolating, you can plug the audio device out into the audio filter.
Let's do the same thing for the mid-channel. But this time, we use a band pass. Let's set it around 600 Hz and create a 24 decibel per octave roll off. Add another audio filter for the lows. But this time we use a low pass filter. Set the cutoff to around 180 Hz. And sharpen the roll off. Oops. We are now monitoring our lows, mids, and highs. Let's check down a trail chop to see it better. Let's also put down a mouth after the merge. Let's select all of this. Right click outside and collapse selected. Rename it to audio analysis. Right-click on the component and customize component. Let's add a parameter called total multiplier. Set maximum to something like 20, default to 10. Let's also create four floats for the responsiveness. Low, mid, high, and total. Right-click on the component and click Parameters. Let's step inside. Drag and drop the multiplier parameter to the last math. And drag and drop the responsiveness parameters to their corresponding filter width. Let's use another audio track that we are all more familiar with.
Now we can see it working. Right click on the component and save it as a tox. Let's exit this project and step back into the one we did last time. Here we are where we left off last time. Let's bring in our audio analysis component. And an audio file. Audio device out chop. A keyboard in. To reset the audio file, but also this speed chop. Connect it to a null. And let's also throw down a lag with 0 0.1 and 1.0. Now, let's start playing with these values. Let's drag and drop the low value to the wave speed constant. And the mids to the disintegration speed. Oh, and I forgot, let's also connect an info chop to the audio file. And select the fraction. Here we get a value between 0 and 1 for how much of the track has passed. It can be used to create slow automations. The rest of the video is just going to be me playing around with these values in different ways. You can follow along if you want to. But I encourage you to try your own ideas. I will just share some rules of thumb. But remember that thumbs are meant to be broken. Or whatever that saying is. The low frequencies create large but slow movements. Think of it like a house shaking. Or continental drift. It is the mass of sounds. The mids create medium-sized movements. But they can be faster. Think of it like people dancing or waves on the water. The highs change the details. It is the hair moving on top of the people dancing. Or the water droplets from the waves. I hope I'm making sense. Feel free to break all of these rules. And cheers!
Thank you. 